Hello everyone, uh, I am Pratik Patra, a PMR and research scholar in the Department of Civil Engineering by IIT Delhi and a J. William Fulbright scholar in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, University of California, Davis, USA. So today, my topic of presentation is Experimental Evaluation of Ductile Listing of Blessing Yard. Let me first briefly introduce uh, what you mean by concentrically based frame system. These are the most effective natural forwarding system that resist the low through vertical truss system with membrane aligning concentrated electrode. They are very high natural strength and stiffness, and they are considered one of the most effective natural forwarding system. Here are some of the components of the concentrated bestium system. Here it dissipates the energy by buckling of the base membrane and uh, inlaying of the base membrane. So the brace are acting as a fuge without harming the other non-structural component or uh, gravity resting element. So uh, a class of a self-concentratically based frame system. Uh, let me face yeah. Uh, so a class of a self-concentratically based frame system that are used to have Maximized ductility and inertia capacity are called special concentric base frame system. They are designed for high inelastic drift and to have high ductility. They are in some cases preferred to the special moment resting system in case of rollage building, where the requirement shows that by designing a severe system, we have a smaller DL growth size. They have different components as I have discussed. So, the buckling direction are basically divided, decided based on the connection or the arrangement of the connection. So, if we have gusset plate connected to the breast member, then we will be having the outer plane buckling behavior. And if we introduce the night plane, then we will get have an in plane buckling behavior in case of the vessel concentrated waste when the lateral load is. So, the braces are connected to the frame structure based on three different types of connections. This connection basically divided or uh, gives uh, behavior based on the direction of the buckling. So one type of connection is first type of connection is called outer plane buckling brace connection. They deform the brace in the outer plane buckling basin. And another type of connection is called internal buckling current connection. They deform the brace in the plane of the uh, frame so that the damage of the structural component is not going to happen. Then another connection is for direct connection where the brace directly connected to the beam column direction is by help the stiffening and the buckling direction depends upon the lowest moment of A inertia of the brace member. So these are the locations where the elasticity is going to fall is when the brace is going to buckle based on the different type of buckle. So in the past I did observe that the most of the study was focused on the outer plane buckling behavior of the brace frame system and the IAE deformation uh, under the lateral load in case of outer plane buckling system was fall up to very high, almost to 500 mm at a lateral dip of 0 0.03 degree. So because of the high lateral, uh, lateral uh, high outer plane deformation behavior, the damage of the external wall uh, equipment and the light losses are also to very high because most of the light losses in case of earthquake because of the failing areas, so which is also very, very high because of this behavior. And she observed that the alternative connection, that is the internal buckling connection, which is a much poor alternative because it buckles in the plane of the beam and column and it prevents the damage of the non-structural component, it has a limited strength, so which is need to be explored uh, to have better understanding so that it can be easily used in, in the design office and the construction process. So, based on the observation, it has been found that. These are very sort of various sort of structural deficiency in case of internal buckling wave system. So in the proposed study, we try to propose an anti equation to, pre to prevent this critical limit state uh, that is uh, having a, a leads to a premature failure. And the second, we evaluated the critical limit state design uh, experimentally under the quasi static loading and to quantify the effect of the proposed equation and to study the influence of the linear clearance of the night on the performance of the uh, internal buckling system. 
So these are the past uh, review on the performance of the uh, infant buckling concentric compression system. The infant buckling are designed that the press will buckle infant, but it has been observed that the outer plane buckling behavior has been found. So the bending is observed in the plane of the gusset. Similarly, the interface well designed uh, was found out to be inefficient to prevent a premature failure. The reason may be one of the reason, one of the most important reasons, maybe, because this interface well are designed based on the uniform force method, which was derived for the outer plane buckling breast remember. So the demand and the requirement for the interface will be different because of IV system because here the plate is even elastic and the extra load is coming because of the bending of the knife plate. So that needs to be explored. And uh, one more failure was observed with the fracture in the knife plate. So this may be one because of the less clearance or fail to quantify the ductility of the plate. So that needs to be explored or needs to be quantified in order to have a proper design. So what we have done is that we try to find out the critical limit state that, and that were primarily responsible for the design of these three type of connections. And we find out that the, there are no limited criteria present for the IVC breast system, how to prevent out, out of plane displacement of the gusset plane and the interface well of the uh, gusset plane. So in the absence of that, these systems are usually designed uh, for out uh, it's a design uh, using the out of plane buckling design criteria, which was observed to be inefficient in preventing the payment. So, in order to find out the demand and the interface where in case of knife plate, we split the forces in uh, when the breasts are in compression and when breasts are in tension. When the breasts are in tension, then the interface adjusts forces which can be found out using the uniform force method as explained on the right side of the slide. Uh, when we have a compressive force, then there are two types of forces are acting, the compressive force of the breast and the bending moment of time. So there is an equation there in order to calculate the interface edges uh, because of the compressive force, but there are no equation there how to calculate the interface edge force because of the movement. So what we have done is we have taken one six-story building at San Francisco and tried to design the connection sizes of the cassette player type player in the interface board and try to carry out a numerical analysis uh, using a phone address cell element. A mesh conversion study was conducted and it was found that 2 mesh is enough to predict the behavior value. In the numerical region, here you see when a movement is applied to knife plate, how the force at the interface well are getting distributed. And based on the numerical analysis, it has been observed that the percentage of the edge forces because of the movement of the knife plate was almost 20 to 14 percent uh, of the ultimate uh, capacity of the press. And the infant movement was found out to be very low. So what does it signify is that while designing the well, we need to consider these extra forces into account. Based on the uh, distribution of the forces, uh, interface uh, forces that is going to generate it because of the bending of the knife plate was proposed and the formula was shown here. It is based on the distribution of the forces that is observed in the numerical system. And it has been found that the percentage of error was within the 10% limit. So the proposed formula was put to predict the interface well at most, uh, like in a, a correct ex to some correct extent. So it can be used to evaluate the interface when designed. It can be used to evaluate. Then the next important uh, criteria is to how to prevent the out of plan bending because they are designed for infant bending. When they experiment, it observed that. The, despite the night of plane bending, the gusset produced to bend, despite having clearance and the premature failure was observed. So how to prevent that? So in that, for that, interaction equation was used. So what we do is that we calculate the moment capacity based on this interaction equation and we compare it to the right plane. Whichever plate has a higher tendency to buckle is going uh, to buckle in that direction. So we make our design sure that 
the moving net capacity of the vessel plus will be higher as compared to the type plus so that the in-plane binding is going to occur and out of plane doubling can be prevented. And in the Newton RCC it will be found that by using this criteria the performance was improved and we will get the improved. Then we, once we have these two criteria uh, then we will be having to design the interface well which is again the base of the tension, compression, and the extra demand is coming due to the bending of the light plane. So the equation was proposed and it was found out to be effective in the numerical analysis. In order to check the effectiveness of the proposed equation, an experimental study was conducted uh, on 26.1 plus 2.9 mm the circular hollow section. So these are the description. Of some of the properties of the vessel mode, which is the slenderness of 8387. Two types of connections were taken with having a different unit level. <coughs> so then we can have, uh, we can check the performance of the interface, well and out of the criteria that we have proposed, as well as with the effect of the clear. So these are detailing, uh, design detailing that we have. And these are experimental setup and the loading protocol uh, that we have used in our experiment. And we have used various uh, strain gas potentiometer to predict some of this. <coughs> Sorry. In the experiment, we observed the hysteresis behavior that with the 60 mm linear clearance, the performance of the implant buckling is drastically increased as comparing to the implant buckling the system, which have only 30 mm linear clearance. And this study actually conducted on the five last full scale experiment, which is published in the AC General Structural Engineering, uh, for more detail, you can refer to for that journal. Uh, so, you can observe that the energy dissipation of the IBC system, which has a 60 billion clearance, is much higher as compared to the 30 billion clearance. And the design proposed design criteria to prevent out of band buckling and to design the interface will perform very well. And we have about the premature set. These are the, some of the failure mechanism that we have in our, uh, during our experiment, the fracture, the yielding of the vessel. Um, and what conclusion we found in our study is the design recommendation that we have proposed to prevent the interface well failure out of plane to perform very well. And premature failures are of what found to be avoided if we go very best by the design criteria that we have proposed. And the clearance in the night plate have enhanced the performance of the CPS system and its fractured ductility. So if you want to increase its performance, then you need to change the clearance from 60p to 80p. And this is for particular cylinder in the system that we have used. So what does it mean? The load for lower cylinder in the system, higher uh, linear clearance is going to work. And for higher cylinder in the lower clearance also is going to work. So detail on this can be uh, referred to the paper that published in general structure. So right now, what we are doing is we try to validate our experimental work uh, based, on, in, based on using the numerical analysis and try to predict the fracture with the micromechanics approach. So once we have this phenomena, we uh, can predict it, then we will be doing the parametric study so that this behavior can be incorporated in the design of it to predict uh, its performance more efficiently. Uh, thank you for listening.